So it turns out if you are an early bird, you should exercise early in the morning because your body is primed and ready and your, your muscles are ready to go and things like that. But if you're a night owl like you and me, if we try to exercise in the morning, we're so tired, we get injured, right? Our, yeah. our movements aren't as fluid as they, as they other people who are morning exercises. Whereas if we exercise closer into the afternoon, yeah. our, our brains are more awake and we'll be able to do that a little bit better. So once you learn your chronotype, and there are four, um, then you can actually, everything becomes easy. So early birds, I call them lions. People in the middle, I call them bears. Night owls, I call them wolves. And then I discovered a fourth chronotype. And that's kind of what I'm most known for is I found that there's a whole group of people who have a lot of anxiety, not a lot of sleep. And um, it's very difficult for them to kind of make it through this whole process. I call them dolphins. The reason I call them dolphins, most people don't know it, but dolphins sleep unihemispherically. So half of their brain is asleep while the other half is awake mm -hmm. looking for predators. I thought that's kind of like my insomnia patients. They're never going to sleep um, and trying to get there. But once you take the quiz and you figure out your category, then I can tell you exactly what time to do just about anything because we've got almost 250 studies in the book of yeah. groups around the world that are looking at these types of things. So it's pretty interesting. So you mentioned uh, sex, when it's the best time to have sex. And I heard that um, women get more energized after having sex while it's obvious that we men, we get sleepy after having sex. Is that, is that true? The data is interesting. Here's what we've discovered. Here's the theory. I don't yeah. think anybody's actually proven this yet, but here's the theory is one of the hormones that's produced while you're being intimate is called oxytocin, which is known as the love hormone. What we think is when oxytocin mis mixes with testosterone, it makes you sleepy. But when oxytocin mis mixes with estrogen, it makes you more alert, mm. right? So women are more estrogen dominant, men are more testosterone dominant. So we think, at least in part, it has to do with this hormonal mixing of testosterone with oxytocin and I estrogen see. oxytocin. And that's why we get the different reactions. Now your question, uh, which is an interesting one, is when should we be intimate? Assuming that our partner has a, a different chronotype, it could get pretty complicated. Now, for me, it was easy. My wife is a night owl. I am a night owl. And we learned this when we were dating. So I would say, I'll pick you up at eight, right? Uh, we'll get to dinner at nine. Uh, we'll eat until 10. Then we'll go to the movies until midnight. Then we'll go get a drink and we'll be home by two, right? Now, that would be a typical... Uh, you know, uh, uh, Madrid evening, right? Uh, you know, I, that would be a great evening in, in yeah. Spain. Yeah. But here in the United States, that's considered super late. Mm. But she was a night owl and I was a night owl. So we never even noticed the difference. Great match. Now things are, things are different. Now, the, now let's say you're at a different position where you don't match perfectly with your chronotype. Michael, when are we going to be intimate? We've done some research. So here's what we discovered is... For women in particular, it really seems to be based on their chronotype. So if you are at, if you're being intimate or you are a woman who has an early chronotype, like a lion and like to get up early, then you prefer to be intimate in the morning times. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. If you're a, a, if you're a female and you are a night owl or what I call a wolf, you prefer sex in the evening times. Okay. Here's what's really interesting. With men, when we surveyed men based on their chronotype, you know what they said? Whenever it's offered. Okay? No joke. Like, I'm not making a joke. Yeah. Men had a completely different understanding of sex. Men would say, if it's offered, I'm, I'm ready to go. So then we looked at it from a biological perspective. Okay? So you need five hormones to successfully be intimate. And they need to be elevated. You need estrogen, testosterone, progesterone, Cortisol and adrenaline all need to be high and melatonin, the sleep hormone needs to be low. Okay. Now, if you think about it, most people have sex between 11 and 1130 at night here in the United States. Guess what? What do you think your hormone profile looks like? Melatonin oh. high and oh. all the other ones. They're low. Hint yeah. Number one. Hint number two. If you're having sex with somebody who has a penis, what do most men have when they wake up in the morning? An erection. If that is not mother nature telling us when to use that thing, I don't know what is. <laughs> so looking at morning intimacy, 
We serve, we asked a group of people to be intimate in the morning, and then we surveyed them to find out what they liked or disliked about it. And here's what we learned is the only dislike was breath, right? So people, so go brush your teeth or throw in some mouthwash or have a mint, okay? Number one. But here's what was so fascinating. For women, they reported better connection with their partner. They felt more intimate. They felt more emotionally connected to their partners by, by being intimate in the morning time. For men, performance was better. Longer erections, harder erections, and the ability to ejaculate. So it was very, I mean, it didn't work every single time, but what was fascinating was just by giving people the assignment of trying to be intimate in the morning time, it actually worked out much better for them. Want to learn more about sleep science? Check out Dr. Michael Bruce's full interview. And if you're curious, dive into the other episodes too. Don't forget to subscribe and share your thoughts in the comments.